Hi guys, Solar Geoengineering, the ultimate dimmer switch. Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about an idea that is so wild it makes cloud seeding look like a child with a water pistol. Sun dimming. Deliberately turning down the brightness on the giant nuclear furnace in the sky, otherwise known to you and I as the sun, to cool the planet. And no, this is not a Netflix pitch. It is actually happening right now in labs, on ships and with £57 million worth of UK taxpayer money for the UK's part in this global weather engineering game. If only it were a game eh? and we could back it away and say, no, it didn't like that game. Let's stop. Anyway, this insane belief that we can dictate and change the weather persists. So grab a drink, close the curtains. Let's spend the next 10 minutes asking, are we actually saving the world? Or are we just breaking the sun? So first off, what actually is sun dimming? Officially, it's called solar radiation management or solar geoengineering. In simple terms, we spray chemicals high into the atmosphere so that one to two percent less sunlight reaches the surface of the earth. What could possibly go wrong? Spraying stuff into the atmosphere. I know, what the actual, I hear you. Well, there are three main ways to do it. Stratospheric aerosol injection, SAI, you fly planes or balloons up to 20 kilometres above the earth and pump out sulphur dioxide. This apparently turns into tiny reflective particles, basically recreating a volcanic eruption on demand. Mount Pinatubo in 1991 did this by accident and cooled the planet by half a degree for 18 months. Then there is marine cloud brightening, MCB. Unmanned boats spray ultrafine seawater mist into low ocean clouds, making them whiter and bouncier and they reflect the sunlight. And finally, cirrus cloud thinning, seeding high wispy clouds so that they disappear faster, letting more heat escape from the earth at night, a bit like opening a planetary window. So who's paying for this madness? Well, more countries and billionaires than you'd think. In the USA, Harvard's Escopex project, which was backed by Bill Gates until there was a public backlash and paused it, plus new NOAA and CIA interest. In China, they're already running modelling, and they do love their models, don't they? And small tests with plans for possible deployment by 2030 if warming overshoots. And of course, in the UK, we have ARIA, A-R-I-A, our mad science agency, spending £57 million in May 25 on 21 outdoor experiments, including a marine cloud brightening trial off the northeast coast right now as I speak, and a ship that's currently spraying over the Great Barrier Reef. Which takes us nicely to Australia, where they are funding the world's biggest marine cloud brightening test a thousand kilometres squared over the reef. And it doesn't stop there. There's India, Israel, Saudi Arabia, South Korea, all running modelling or small field tests. The whole world has jumped on this bandwagon, trust me. Believe it or not, there is a US startup called Make Sunsets, literally selling cooling credits. They've already launched dozens of weather balloons with sulfur in Mexico. They got banned for that, but they're not giving up and there's much more to come from them. Where people see money, they go for it and they damn the consequences or the ethics of it and they don't ask us. So the big question has to be, why are they doing it? Well, because they are obsessed by carbon emissions and they think we are losing the emissions race, if you believe there's a race. According to the experts, we're on track for an estimated 2.7 to 3.1 degrees Celsius rise in global temperatures this century. Every half degree past 1.5 C is predicted to mean millions more in heat waves, floods, crop failures. Geoengineering is being sold as the emergency brake buy us 20 to 30 years to decarbonise while stopping the worst tipping points. Greenland and Antarctica melt, the Amazon die back, permafrost bomb is what they say. It's always the same, isn't it? Experts identify a problem and then make zillions with the solution that we have to accept and have no say in. They tell us there is no other way, it's this way or disaster way. Think Covid, guys. Now the scary bit. The downsides nobody wants to tell you about. 
Termination shock. If you start this project and then you suddenly stop through war, politics, money running out, the planet gets all of that pent up warm, warming back in one horrific decade. So you could see a five degree jump in 10 years, game over for most ecosystems. An ozone hole, 2.0, sulphur eats ozone. Pinatubu temporarily thinned it by 8%. Doing this every year could wreck the layer that stops us getting fried by ultraviolet. Those of you old enough to remember the hole in the ozone zone layer, which was healed by stopping CFCs. Monsoon chaos. There are models that show Asian and African monsoons could weaken or shift away. Hundreds of millions of people rely on those rains for rice. India has already said if you touch our monsoons, we'll shoot the planes down. Good old India. Acid rain light. Sulphur plus water equals sulfuric acid. It's a gentle version, but still not great for lakes and forests. Think acid rain. The sky goes milky. No more deep blue skies. Sunsets turn a weird purple orange. Astronomers hate it. Instagram hates it. I hate it. Governance nightmare. Who controls the global thermostat? One rogue nation or billionaire could unilaterally dim the sun for everyone. No treaty, no UN veto, no off switch. And then there's the moral hazard. If we believe that oil is evil, Oil states and big emitters love this because it lets them keep drilling while pretending to fix the problem. And then there's the unknown unknowns. We've never tested this at scale. Whilst every climate model says high confidence something bad will happen, low confidence exactly what? Where's the UK in all of this? We're not just watching guys, we are one of the biggest funders of these real world tests. Little country, big funding. 57 million from ARIA includes a former aircraft carrier, the HMS Prince of Wales, being refitted to spray seawater mist off Northumberland this winter. Drones over the North Sea testing cloud brightening. High altitude balloons over Scotland quickly moved to England after the Scottish government said they declined participation. And as important as these decisions are, they are being made without us having any say. Do you remember voting for this? I certainly didn't. Do you remember talking about your hard earned tax funding it? Nor me. As the old saying goes, democracy doesn't work. If it did, they would never let us vote. And they certainly don't want us voting on this. They would have to explain it. And that might just see the whole argument fall apart. A petition to ban this hit 180,000 signatures last month. It was basically ignored. So my final thoughts on this really, really ridiculous situation is sun dimming is the ultimate break glass in emergency button. It might work, it might save millions of lives, because it might also do much worse. Trash the sky, trigger the biggest geopolitical crisis in history, and still not stop ocean acidification. We're literally running planetary experiments with no control group, seven billion unwitting participants. And where is the discussion around mitigations for climate change? Put all of those zillions of pounds into planting trees, improving flood protection, crop protection, drainage, and so on, so that as the planet warms, we adapt to it. And don't forget, far few people die in, if it warms because cold kills more people than heat by a factor of 10. So good luck, everybody. Maybe keep the factor 50 out just in case. And tell me in the comments, did you like this? Would you trust a committee of politicians and billionaires with the global dimmer switch? Because that's where we're going. If you like this, share it. And if you want more deep dives into stuff that sounds like sci-fi but isn't, subscribe so you don't miss the next one. And I'll see you soon, hopefully, under a beautiful blue normal coloured sky. Take care, everyone.